Rishi Sunak has taken part in a live Q&A for GB News. The appearance was widely seen as an attempt to win back voters switching to the Reform Party in the polls. Lots of Reform politicians work for GB News. Farage founded the party and he now has a daily GB News show. Richard Tice is the current leader and he's a regular on GB News. And this was Sunak's response to an audience who had once voted Tory and now backed reform. In one sense, I can completely appreciate your frustration, right? And that's because it's been a tough couple of years, right? When we go through the things that we've been through as a country, as I said, energy bills, more than doubling, right? again, starting to come down, the economic strain that that's put on all your family budgets, the impact of COVID on backlogs, NHS, waiting for appointments, like all of those things are, are real things that will cause you and everyone else an enormous amount of frustration. I can completely understand that. But I think fundamentally, what you want and what I want are the same. Right? What I talked about at the beginning, the things that I'm focused on, right, the values that are important to me, I think are things that we probably share. And all of you who clapped, I probably say the same thing. Right? I think actually we want the same things for our country. We share the same values, whether that's on controlling spending, cutting your taxes to ease the cost of living, making sure that we have strong borders and we tackle illegal migration. Right? These are things that we have in common. These are all things that we want. And what I'd say to you and everyone else is the next election is a straightforward choice. <laughs> At the end of it, either Keir Starmer or I am going to be prime minister, right? And a vote for anyone who is not a conservative candidate is simply a vote to put Keir Starmer into number 10. So the question for you and everyone else who clapped, I completely appreciate your frustration, is who do you want to see in government after the next election? Who do you think it's more likely to deliver on the things that you care about? Right? You talked about those traditional conservative things, right? Controlling spending, cutting taxes, a strong economy, bringing mortgage rates and inflation and borrowing down, strong borders, police on the streets. Right? All those things that you care about, who's more likely to deliver them? Because it's certainly not Keir Starmer, right? Now, that's the pink, that's the thing, and that's the choice, right? A vote for anyone who is not us is a vote for him, right? We've just seen over the last, I mean, last few days, you've seen what's happened, right? Keir Starmer has been running around for the last year trying to tell everybody, okay, the Labour Party's changed, right? Well, look what just happened in Rochdale. A candidate saying the most vile, awful conspiracy theories. So vote for me because Labour believe in conspiracy theories. Of course, GB News is no stranger to conspiracies and neither was their audience. My name is John Watt and I'm one of the COVID vaccine injured in this country. I want you to look into my eyes, Rishi Sunak, and I want you to look at the pain, the trauma and the regret I have in my eyes. We have been left with no help at all. Not only am I in here that's vaccine injured, there's another man over there whose life's been ruined by that COVID-19 vaccine. I know people who have lost legs, amputations. I know people with heart conditions like myself, Rishi Sunak. Why have I had to set up a support group in Scotland to look after the people that have been affected by that COVID-19 vaccine? Why are the people who are in charge who told us all to do the right thing, have left us all to rot and left me and the thousands and the tens of thousands in this country to rot. Rishi Sunak looked me in the eye. When are you going to start to do the right thing? The vaccine damage payment scheme is not fit for purpose. In Scotland right now, according to the yellow card system, there are over 30,000 people that have had an adverse reaction to that vaccine and okay. 200 deaths. J John, thank you very much indeed for your question. It's time you've, for you to start doing the right thing, Mr. Rishi Sunak, and the rest. You've, you've, you've made a really strong point, John. Prime Minister. Yeah, John, well, I'm very sorry to hear about your personal circumstances, and you said someone over here also seems to have suffered by the similar, by a similar thing. Now, obviously, I, I don't know about the individual situation that you're we're in. Silence, and we're silenced, Well, on I social don't. Social media and everything. Okay. We are silenced. We are the most silenced people in this country. It's important to be clear that there aren't tens of thousands of people who've suffered serious injuries from COVID vaccines or who have been left to rot, as that man said. In total, nine people in Scotland have died as a result of the COVID vaccine. 17,000 people died of COVID. 
Of course, that's not to say that the man in question might not have been seriously affected, but his stats just weren't right. And where he might have got those bad stats, well, one possibility is former GB News host Mark Stein. He was found to have broken Ofcom rules last year for presenting misleading information to the public, specifically information about COVID vaccines. And a current host, Neil Oliver, recently suggested COVID vaccines were causing what he called turbo cancer. Somewhat bizarrely, Ofcom decided that was okay. James, was it a good idea for Rishi Sunak to do this Q&A for GB News? It was a good idea for GB News to get him. I mean, this is a, he's still a prime minister um, and he's giving his seal of approval uh, to the programme and to his coverage. GB News have all sorts of ambitious plans to really muscle their way into uh, the election this time around. And that, by the way, I mean, let's be honest, that, by the way, is a big old fillip for reform uh, in that election campaign. So it's a big boost for them to get that kind of authority in the room to make them look like they're now an established, credible broadcaster that the prime minister has to go to. Uh, but it's a total mistake for Rishi Sunak, who is the prime minister, to have to go and do this. Like That isn't the way around this works. He should be conducting himself as if he is the prime minister still, which he is, and therefore he should be uh, rising above uh, looking like he has to try and appeal to Reform UK. I mean, this is how the, how the style of the thing works out. This is how conventional notions of authority and how you appear and all the rest of it play themselves out. It's a sign of his weakness, I would say, and a certain amount of desperation that he's there doing this instead. Because look, you can see just from the clip, the reaction he had to, to that guy, uh, the attempt to try and empathize with people suffering the rest of it. He's not actually that good at this sort of specific thing of relating to like normal people about their concerns. And this is kind of something you're going to have to do in that sort of audience, as well as answering the questions, thinking on your feet and all the rest of it. That's how it's set up. And he's not that good at it. So no, a real mistake for him, but a big old coup for GB News. I get the sense that Rishi Sunak just wasn't cut out for politics. He doesn't seem comfortable when he's engaging with real life human beings or indeed paying to fill up his car with petrol. And maybe he should have just stuck with Silicon Valley, you know, would get him out of our hair, at least. The audience in the room didn't seem too inspired by Sunak either. Madam, any thoughts on that? Have you changed your mind on Mr. Sunak? Um, I've not changed my mind. I'm just still very undecided. I wasn't very impressed with... What was, were the answers that were coming back? So, yeah, I'm still undecided. And you, sir? I thought Rishi was very polished, professional. I thought he was very courteous. I thought the audience were very courteous, apart from a couple of exceptions, where I feared for my life a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I thought he came across quite, quite, he's a well-meaning, decent kind of guy. Will you vote for him? I'm undecided. I think it's lost. If I'm okay. totally honest, he's, uh, you know, he's trying his best, but I don't think the Conservatives can win at the next election. Sir, can the, can, as a PM, convince you to vote for him? He's, hmm, he's convinced me to think about it, but what I really am thinking about at the moment is, where do I hand in my expenses claims? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me, sir. I'm a new journalist. <laughs> I like someone who's got their priorities in the right order. Like, look, before we get into this whole election election, where do I hand in my expenses claims? I mean, that didn't seem like a group of people who were fired up by him. You know, the best that Rishi Sunak maybe got was a little bit more of a hearing than he may have had before he conducted this kind of town hall style meeting. But no one left with real faith in him. I mean, from your perspective, is there anything that he could do to turn things around or is he a doomed captain on a sinking ship? I think he can do what he is doing, which is um, sitting tight and waiting for Labour to keep tripping over their own shoelaces, right? Because that's actually happening on a fairly sort of frequent basis at the minute. And given the last sort of few weeks, it's not an unreasonable bet that actually a few more things will go wrong for them somewhere down the line. I mean, that's what it's starting to, to look like here. He's also got work in his favour. We'll see what sort of happens with the economy and interest rates over the rest of the year. You can always cling on to the hope that this might actually turn around and start to look a bit better. Real wages uh, are rising in Britain. Perhaps the Bank of England will cut interest rates further. These sort of things could happen in the next few months. Not really in his hands uh, at this point in time. Probably if you really start to work it, maybe you could try and do what he's doing, which is going off and attempting to appeal to reform UK voters and the rest of it. But honestly, if you're Rishi Sunak, this doesn't really work for you. It doesn't work for how people perceive you, where you're coming from, the kind of politics you've spoke about in the past, what you said in order to get elected as Prime Minister uh, back in the day when he was standing 
branding that it doesn't add up to a package that's particularly convincing and probably isn't the sort of thing that you could do with the kind of gusto and conviction that perhaps somebody like uh, Boris Johnson would have been able to do. Tories, by the way, for all his faults and all the rest of it, I feel like Boris Johnson would have done a better job, for example, with that uh, town hall style meeting than Rishi Sunak managed. When the most you get out of it is like, as the guy said, he's kind of trying his best. He seems sort of nice, you know. That's not a ringing endorsement. That's not like let's make this uh, let's make this guy prime minister for another four or five years. It's not there. The most warm emotion I've ever felt towards Rishi Sunak is a kind of pity where I can easily imagine him having been on the receiving end of an mm -hmm. atomic wedgie when he was a kid. And that's the best I can think of him, is that once upon a time he may have been a bully child. It's not really prime minister material.